I am Dr. Tasha Welch, Assistant Professor of Anesthesiology. With me is Dr. William Lanier, Professor of Anesthesiology. We represent the Department of Anesthesiology and Perioperative Medicine at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. The title of our report is Real-Time Synangiography Visualization of Cerebral Aneurysm Rupture in an Awake Patient, Anatomic, Physiological, and Functional Correlates. Our co-authors are Dr. Walid Brinjitschke, Assistant Professor of Radiology in the Department of Radiology, and Dr. Giuseppe Lanzino, Professor of Neurologic Surgery in the Department of Neurologic Surgery. In our case report, we describe a 71-year-old female patient who presented to an outside hospital with a two-day history of headaches and evoked diplopia. Of note, she had a history of treated cerebral aneurysms many years earlier. With the current episode, she was referred to Mayo Clinic for evaluation of a newly discovered aneurysm within the basilar artery identified on computed tomography of the head. Care was sought at Mayo Clinic because of neurosurgical services that were not available at the referring hospital. While hospitalized at Mayo Clinic, the patient experienced aneurysm rupture that was visualized in real time during diagnostic angiography. In our report, we describe the clinical course of the patient, factors that might have contributed to the rupture, and the eventual outcome. These issues are important because rupture of a cerebral aneurysm is a cause of considerable morbidity and mortality when analyzed on a population basis. Clinical symptoms relate primarily to either mass effect or leaking or rupture of the aneurysm. It is estimated that between 16,000 and 30,000 patients experience aneurysm rupture and corresponding subarachnoid hemorrhage per year in the United States. Using the larger rate, this corresponds to one case every 17 and one half minutes. Despite this, aneurysm rupture has seldom been witnessed and recorded in real time during diagnostic angiography. As such, the case we presented is unique in that, number one, there was no empirical evidence that the sentinel aneurysm had leaked or ruptured before diagnostic angiography, though the history was suspicious for possible minor undetectable leaking. Number two, the patient was awake and experienced almost instantaneous neurologic deterioration upon aneurysm rupture, which we documented. And number three, we described the physiologic correlates and distribution of blood from the aneurysm. All of these items have value in enhancing our clinical understanding of the nature and consequences of aneurysm rupture. The patient was initially admitted to the intensive care unit of Mayo Clinic, and neurological evaluation was essentially normal though the patient reported the sensation of diplopia upon extreme upward and lateral gazes. Of note, there was no radiologic evidence of aneurysm rupture, hence the patient was classified as Hunt and Hess grade one. A diagnostic cerebral angiogram was scheduled and the patient was taken to a catheterization suite where she was physiologically monitored and minimally sedated. When the aneurysm began, the patient was awake, alert, and communicating freely with the care team. Using standard techniques, an angiography catheter was inserted through the femoral artery to the junction of the subclavian artery and the origin of the right vertebral artery. It was estimated from images that the tip of the catheter was 37 centimeters from the aneurysm and blood was able to pass freely around the catheter into the artery feeding the aneurysm. As such, contrast material was later injected into a semi-open vascular system. Approximately five seconds after contrast injection was initiated, the aneurysm ruptured. This and the subsequent subarachnoid hemorrhage was monitored in real time at a sampling rate of two images per second. By a mere two seconds after aneurysm rupture, contrast material had filled the lateral third and fourth cerebral ventricles. We were able to present angiographic images from these sequences in our publication and also describe a confirmatory computed tomographic scan. The patient became unresponsive immediately after aneurysm rupture. Care from this point forward involved, among others, neuroanesthesiologists, neurosurgeons, radiologists, neurologists, and intensivists. Our report describes emergency and other treatments as well as the physiologic and clinical course of the patient, including rapid clinical deterioration over the two hours after aneurysm rupture. The patient died the following day. 
In our report, we describe the possible origins of aneurysm rupture while the patient was in our care, including the possible contributions of chance, angiography, and physiologic changes. We also describe the different risk profiles of diagnostic versus therapeutic cerebral angiography. Additionally, we discussed whether the specifics of our case allow insights into risk reduction in future patients. Our report acknowledges that when examined on a population basis, cerebral aneurysm rupture carries a dismal prognosis with 30-day mortality rates as high as 45%. Most deaths occur during the first few days after subarachnoid hemorrhage, and even among survivors, there is a considerable rate of morbidity related to persistent neurologic deficits. Of note, even though our patient experienced aneurysm rupture in a tertiary care medical center, and the patient was immediately cared for by a multidisciplinary team of experts in aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage, we were not able to prevent major morbidity or mortality in this patient. Our report is intended to help physicians better understand the dynamics associated with acute aneurysmal rupture, including the rapidity and route of spread of blood, the abrupt onset of loss of consciousness, and the liability of blood pressure. A better understanding of these factors can hopefully assist clinicians in caring for the immense number of patients who experience aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage each year. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www dot mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.